I want to welcome everybody to our 26th episode of our Bay Area Housing Market Town Hall. So let me go ahead and start on the state of the market. And I also want to kind of review what's been happening in 2021. If we look at Santa Clara County, just to show you guys, here are three uh, lines that you can see. So the orange line is uh, 2019 numbers. And the blue line is 2020 and the um, green line is 2021. Most of us know that in 2019, our market was actually kind of slow and the, the price uh, did not go up that fast. And then some markets actually dropped a little bit in 2019. And we always say that the price get driven up because of low supply and high demand. But as you see that in um, 2019, we actually have lower supply compared to 2020 and 2021. But 2020 and 2021, that's when our market has gone up quite significantly. And uh, one of the major factors, obviously, is because of the interest rate. The mortgage rates has been very low and has encouraged a lot of people to buy. So I just thought to show everybody that um, 2019, even though the supply was a little bit lower and in Santa Clara County, the price was not going up that much. And our supply is actually pretty good compared to um, 2019 and 2021 and also 2020, which is the blue line here. We are pretty close with, with each other. And, um, and we both see that three years, uh, all three years around November 27th, we have a dip in the new listings. And this is because obviously this is the Thanksgiving weekend typically. So that's why the listings has gone down around this mm. time. And then shoot back up about a week later. As soon as Thanksgiving um, is over, they should back up. But then um, as the December continues, and you'll see that the new listings will come down. And same thing for pendings, our 2021 and 2020, we are pretty similar in numbers. And as you see that around November 27, again, the pendings has gone down. Pendings meaning like that's when people got under contract around that time. Besides the fact that in uh, 2020 after November, it has stayed pretty consistent, but then it did drop quite a bit right around the December 25th. That's uh, around the holiday season. So, uh, but I remember usually our December slowed down quite a bit, but last year in 2020, we were really busy, actually all the way through until January 1st. So um, this year though, we do see a little bit slower compared to last year and more in line with uh, 2019. And here is the sold numbers and these are actually closed escrow. So when you look at these numbers, you have to backtrack about a month before, right? Because it takes about a month to close escrow. So uh, if you look at the orange line again, and, um, the number of close versus the number of close for 2021 and 2020, they are lower. And then typically around December, again, we shoot back up a little bit and then dwindling down. All right, but let's look at what is the difference between the active and pending listings towards the end of the month. And why is it so important to look at these numbers? Because when we look at um, active numbers for both single family and condos, uh, the active numbers is down here for single family. But then the number of contingent and pending, meaning that we have so much demand, whatever comes out, we pretty much gobble them up and then go um, go under contract. But then as December comes around, you started seeing that the contingent um, and pendings has slowed down quite a bit, even though we still have some listings coming up. And that's why you start seeing the market slow down a little bit. In certain markets, it's still crazy. We still have a lot of multiple offers, but um, you do definitely see a lot of markets in different neighborhoods started slowing down. And same thing for condo markets as well. Now, Let's look back to the median sales price and how it has changed since 2004. And in 2004, um, you see that the median sales price in Santa Clara County is just slightly over $600,000. And then the peak, the last peak we had before the recession, before the market actually dropped was about 2007. And that was slightly over $800,000. And then it took about um, seven years to go back to around the same level, which is 2014. And if you compare the last peak to this, to this year's, um, uh, uh, how much it has gone up, the last peak was at 835,000. And now our median sales price at $1.61 million. And this is about 14 years. And that 
equivalent to 93% appreciation since 2007. Even we had that greatest, the second greatest recession in history um, because of the mortgage crisis. And uh, if you had bought something back then, you probably average has uh, gained about $775,000 on appreciation. So if you look at this way, it's kind of like, okay, if you are holding a property long term, um, I hear a lot of our clients who say like, well, we want to hold our property for at least 10 years, 15 years. If this is for your own home, then we we always encourage our clients like really look at the market and you are not going to go wrong. You, it's more important to come in and buy that home for your family because of the stability, because of, um, you know, the, the, the sense of security. And also, of course, I, if you're talking about economically, is that the mortgage rate, um, you can, your mortgage payment is really low because of the low mortgage rate. But um, I want to show you guys this drastic difference because because if you imagine some people bought in 2007 and then in 2009 they said like gosh you know I bought it at the peak but now they're very happy because they had gained so much appreciation because they didn't sell and they have kept it and same thing for condos I know some people also say like well condo is not as good of an investment let's look at the difference between the condo and single family now if you look at condos same thing the last peak is around 2007 and then um, it, it waited about 2014 to hit around the same price point and now comparing to 2007 and today's median sales price back then is $433,000 and today is $898,000. And that is 107% appreciation. That's $465,000 appreciation. Dollar amount wise, yes, it's not as much, but obviously you started much lower too. But then the percentage wise actually has gone up even more than single family. I thought this is really interesting to look at because I think a lot mm -hmm. of people don't really look at it that way. They just really worry. It's like, oh, I don't want to buy at the peak. But I always say, if you're buying this for your family, if this is a long-term thing, just hold on to it and hold on to that 30 years mortgage payment that you can get right now at this low mortgage rate. All right, let's take a look at something else here and days on the market. Single family days on the market. If you look back at the worst time, again, the recession, it has gone over 35 days, almost 40 days on the market for single family, while the condos um, also, um, it was actually a little bit longer. It's uh, 45 days around there. But now, um, but both pretty much both um, single family and condos, they are less than two weeks on the market only. And uh, again, remember just now we talked about 2019, the supply was lower, but then the price also didn't come up as much. And the uh, properties were on the market a lot longer at the time it was like about two weeks, over two weeks time frame. But now 2020 and 2021, they're both like less than two weeks on the market. And in terms of like, so how competitive it is, to bid for the property, um, that's a sales price to the original price ratio. I thought this is really crazy. I, I think people didn't really, uh, really expect to see this, uh, especially during the recession time. I mean, during the recession, we're still talking about way over 100%, meaning like your sales price is actually way higher than the asking price. But this is, again, I'm uh, I just want to make sure you know that this is the original price and meaning that this is the, the first listing price that came out on the market. Well, I have to say that th some of these numbers probably skewed because at that time there was so much REO, so much um, short sales, and then their strategy was a little bit different back then. But still, you see that both condos and single family this, it has always been, almost always been like over 100% asking. Besides 2019, again, uh, slightly lower. That was the one year I remember a lot of buyers who came to our open houses said that they're going to wait until 2020 because the market was going to crash because that's what they saw on YouTube. And as you and I know now, the market didn't crash. Uh, on the contrary, the market has gone up significantly since 2019. So and this is uh, something that I thought was interesting to show. Now let's move over to San Mateo County, which is on the peninsula side. And I was like, oh my gosh, it has broken the $2 million median sales price this month for single family. And I still about 17 days on the market is just about slightly, slightly, slightly more um, number of units listed 
And uh, in terms of uh, the condo and townhomes still had, uh, it also has gone up to $925,000. It is also still at 22 days on the market. Um, it has a little bit less, uh, less inventory, but then, um, but we still have about 140 units closed. So what about San Mateo? This is very similar. I'm just showing you guys here because it's almost the same as Santa Clara County. The trend is the same. Uh, 2019 level is lower than the 2020 and 2021 level. Same thing, the Thanksgiving weekend um, inventory dropped. So the uh, throughout the counties, we have very similar charts that we are showing you guys. So you can see the trend. Uh, I know there are a lot of people always ask about the um, when is a good time to buy and when is a good time to sell? So you can always, you know, uh, know that around the um, uh, Thanksgiving timeframe, this is when the number of listings come down. And for the buyers, when we advise the buyers is that no, November and December is truly the best time to go look for properties. I'm not saying that you will be the only one on the market, but the competition level is going to be so much less. And there there is a lot less listings as well. So you may not be able to find that perfect home for you, but in case you do, um, this is a time that you're actually not competing with too many people. So let's look at the same thing here is um, interestingly, San Mateo County, uh, you see that active number of active listings, the yellow line, and also the pending listings, which is the red line, they kind of like, um, uh, at first they have a lot that they, whatever comes out on the market, they just absorb it. And but you look at last year, there was actually more listings and they didn't have as much pending. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but you know, we've been doing this for about two years now. So at last year, when we look at San Mateo County, uh, the pricing were actually not as strong, actually had come down because uh, uh, we noticed a lot of people were kind of moving away from San Mateo County uh, because they were expensive. And now that you see that the market has gone back up and then that's why um, it's been, you, we see the pricing has been going back up. But last year, the pricing actually came down a little bit, um, especially for the condos, it, you can see pretty significantly. But if you compare the condo townhomes versus single family, now you, you can definitely see See how different it is with uh, um, the the how active uh, number of active listings here versus the number of contingent and the meaning how many properties have gone under contracts. So um, earlier we saw that a lot of these is like whatever comes out they gone under contract, but then you see that there's actually more inventories compared to what is being absorbed. Uh, and here is the, again, the median sales price for San Mateo County. So if you had bought in San Mateo County, right, back in 2007, which was the last peak before the recession. So you look at and also compare 2014, it not only it has reached back to 2007 level, it actually has gone up a little bit as well. And if you compare the pricing, the median sales price back in 2007 was already 888,000, while the median sales price uh, for 2021 is $1.9 million, which means that was 114% appreciation and you had just gained a million and $12,000 appreciation in value, even though you had gone through the, one of the worst recessions on the market. And then as for the condo market and townhome market, same thing, 2014 came back up to the same level. And uh, if you look at 2007, it was 589,000 median sales price. And in 2021, that went up to 925,000, which equivalent to 57% appreciation. Um, and that's $336,000 appreciation. It's actually a bit less than uh, Santa Clara County. Is, um, interestingly, I thought um, San Mateo County at first uh, for their condo townhomes would have a higher appreciation, but um, even though their single family has a much higher appreciation, their condo townhomes on the other hand didn't have as much of a appreciation compared to Santa Clara County. And in terms of days on the market, it's about 38 days, and now it's just nine days. Same thing for condos back um, in 2008. Um, the worst time was 48 days. Now it's like about 12 days. And it's been like this less than 20 days uh, since back in 2012. And you see the 
big drop. It's like 2011 and then something happened. It's like 2012, it just dropped. All of a sudden the market just came back. I was like, we are all ready to buy. And um, I, I remember very distinctly that 2012, just like what happened? All of a sudden the market is like really active again. <laughs> All right, so San Mateo County, again, for the sales price to original price ratio, again, I thought my chart was wrong earlier, right? But when I did it for different counties, it's the same thing. And uh, they are just all over 100%. Um, it it's has always been very, very competitive, always um, high demand. But then again, but back then we had a little bit more of the REO short sales um, on the market and then um, th this is like 2013 to 2021. These are more of the regular market where you're not dealing with the banks, you're actually dealing with the sellers themselves. But in 2008 to 2011, most, a lot of our listings on the market at the time, they were all short sell or bank owned properties. And in terms of Alameda County, um, similar situation with the active pending sold. I'm not going to go into it too much because they, we are following the same trend. Um, but I definitely want to show you guys on in terms of like the pricing as well, the median sales price in 2007, that was almost um, about $650,000. And then 2021 is $1.15 million, which is 77% uh, appreciation or equivalent to $500,000 appreciation for the single family. While condos, it has gone from $409,500 to $975,000. And that's a whopping 138% appreciation and $565,500 appreciation value. I mean, again, Alameda, this is uh, where, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people were really shocked about this too. It's like, wow, that's 138%. I'm going to show you guys later, um, much later in the chart. I, when I started looking all these numbers, I thought it's really interesting, um, especially if you think about you're not really paying cash for these properties, you're only paying 20%. Then you're going to look at really what is actual percentage of return on investment that you're getting. So I hope this uh, this is interesting for you guys to look at. But we also want to share with you some of these properties in the, the area I'm trying to share with you guys. Uh, if you look back to last month, a lot of these number of offers here, they were all double digits. And then you see that November is now, it's only four offers, three offers. There are some that is, um, like Cupertino and these have 16 offers. Um, so it depends on the area. Some of the areas are still very, very strong, but some areas you do see that they are slowing down. They're not as competitive as, before where we see double digit number of offers. So um, I don't know how, much, how many times I have to remind people that if you are really looking for something, don't stop it during this holiday season. I know it's frustrating when you don't see a lot of listings on the market, but don't stop because this is a time when you, you find something, you're not competing with a lot of people out there. Thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like our videos, make some comments because we're going to keep you posted on the most updated real estate news, housing market data, and also real estate tips and advice from all over the real estate industry. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.